Well, I should imagine that most singer-songwriters can be identified by their style. I've got a peculiar voice. It's taken years of beer drinking and smoking to reach this. Uh, to tell you the truth, I can't talk properly about my own songs. I can't identify them. I write what pleases me, what makes me laugh, what makes me cry, and what makes other people laugh and crack on with it. So where, where are the roots of your music from? Are they folk? To tell you the truth, when I was in my teens, in the formative years, when uh, I should really have been listening to Buddy Holly, I was in France and I was listening to French music. And if anything, my chord progressions and my approach to writing songs is based on what a lot of French people do, to write songs with stories to them or um, political or social comment. And I enjoy that. I like messing about with words. I started writing children's songs when our first child was expected. And I thought, when this child arrives, given by God, I will give the child something. I cannot make things with my hands. I shall give him a song. And then. Other children turned up, and I've got quite a lot of children's songs. And they were the little lily bay, bay, sorry, wongy sort of thing. The thing you expect Americans to write, you know. Like red and yellow. And my children, I mean, we disliked them intensely. And I used to strap them into a high chair, and then my eldest son said, Listen, Father, what I'd like you to do is uh, eight out of ten for effort, but we don't like these songs, pal. Um, I don't like your other songs, actually, but at least we know who's singing them. Why don't you write a children's song for us that's in your style, you know? Uh, long words, gruesome stories, no tunes, and give those to us. And so I did that, I started doing it, and I got interested in it. Now we've got lots of songs at home that we sing, oh, when we're doing the washing up or making beds or going for walks. And most of these songs I couldn't sing to you because you and your listeners would not know what we were on about because we are about uh, our cats and things like that. Tell us where you get the material for your songs. Where do you get the ideas from? Because, I mean, you're obsessed with various things. Women's bodies are one thing for a start. I mean, you can hardly write a lot of songs about match angling. It's something else I like, or taking off photography. Yes, I admire women ever such a lot, and they're very important to me and, and to other people. And how do you write a song? Uh, you get up early in the morning, you have a good wash and shave, put on a good clean shirt. John Keats used to say this, whatever you do, John Keats used to say, put on a good clean shirt. And then I sit at a table and I work hard until something comes. When it comes, I start developing it. I don't think that my appeal is limited to the North. I'll tell you what, though, it is limited to Britain. I once got invited to go and sing in Holland. And it, there was a studio audience, you know. And the Dutch people apparently have got a great facility with English. You know, you've recognised it's about most of them, but it's a quite a superficial facility. And blow me if the producer didn't have to get up and explain song by song. Now, this song is about cockerel. And this cockerel, and then he goes and tells the song about the bantam story of the bantam cock. And I have to sing in English to these poor faced Dutch people. And the producer's behind me going through the motions, telling them at what point the story is. The, the mention of buzzards, and he's flapping about like this. Uh, I'm strictly limited to Britain, to English-speaking parts of the world. Uh, I, or to Australia, to Hong Kong. Would you believe it? I've been singing in Indonesia. If you enjoyed this interview, please click on the like button, ring that notification bell, and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos.